with the fall 2021 anime just around the corner, summer's coming to its full close. And with that, all the shows, for the most part, that I plan to finish in the summer 2021 season have already concluded. So today we're going to be doing a seasonal review where essentially I'm going to talk about all the shows in summer 2021 that I watched. Not necessarily to the completion because some of the shows on this list I did not finish because they're ass because seasonal anime is a fucking crockpot of random shit. Well, you'll sometimes you'll get Mushoku Tensei's and then other times you'll get fucking X-Arm. So because of that, I didn't finish all of them. But nonetheless, anything that I did watch, at least partially, I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm putting it in a ranking from, you know, the worst that I watched to whatever would be sitting in first place as the favorite anime for this season and talking about all of them. So we'll go ahead and get right into those rankings, starting with the lowest. So just a little side note, as I'm editing, I realized that the numbers that I gave were wrong. Uh, so just fucking ignore those. Uh, the order is correct, but in my uh, document, I had two number fours because I'm dumb as shit. So my bad. Starting out the, at the lowest, and at number nine would be Mother of Goddesses Dormitory. So Mother Goddess Dormitory is like your really typical, it's all about the fucking tits and shit kind of anime. I watched it for this reason, of course, but, you know, as I continued to watch, it was just so unbearably unoriginal and dog water, I just couldn't keep going. The The characters were boring, the plot, of course, was non-existent, they never are, but the art of it felt really generic to where it was just hard to really continue wanting to watch this show, so I ended up dropping it relatively early on, only getting through three of the ten episodes. Coming in at number 8 was Spirit Chronicles, which I watched all 12 episodes of, and holy shit was this just boring and unoriginal. It, like, was confused on whether or not it actually wanted to be an isekai in the first place, that your elements of isekai were lightened to where it was essentially like he had already been alive and born and stuff, but he gets memories of past life, so it's like, not technically an isekai, it's still a true fantasy story, but they just had to get the isekai elements, and other characters are, like, just full isekai It's so stupid and so annoying. The characters were the most bland, boring, unoriginal shit. It, you know, it felt like they were trying to take stuff from all over the place where you had stuff like from you know they had taken the magic school had to take in the whole outcast thing like they you know the class divide they just couldn't settle on like one unoriginal trope that they did everything and this guy was just like unexplainedly talented at everything and you later learn on it's because he was just born special but you never saw that he was special at his birthplace because they were poor and you know it, it was just so stupid and was such a power fantasy grab overall i just I didn't like it at all. I watched it on a recommendation from a friend because he really likes it to guys and he literally has like the most water taste possible. Like he likes everything he watches. So it was probably a bad idea at the start to do this, but would highly not recommend Spirit Chronicles. Also, as a side note, that dumbass electric guitar that comes in at the end of epi every episode has the worst fucking timing imaginable. Like, I, it, it bothered, I fucking, I hate this show. This show is ass. Just kill me. The next show that I watched was Peach Boy Riverside, which I watched all of two of the 12 episodes of. The reason I ended up watching this anime, even though I had no interest originally in it, was because I watched the Anime Man's plan to watch kind of for the f summer season. I know what season it is. And he in it talked about the interesting plot of Peach Boy Riverside because it's an alternate tale of a classic Japanese, you know, story. Because of that, it interested me. But upon watching it, I realized whatever interesting base it had, it did not have anything else interesting to it. The character design was bland. The actual, like, overall plot felt really bland once it got into the story. There was nothing there for me. Of course, I did only get two episodes in, so I can't speak too much for it, but would highly not recommend this one as well. The next show that I watched was Battle Game in 5 Seconds, which I also dropped only two episodes in. Although I do want to say that this show was not nearly as bad as the other three that I just mentioned. It has an interesting plot where it's basically just a forced tournament arc where everyone has individual powers and they have to make their way through the tournament. I don't know much more past that because, of course, I only got through the first two episodes. And this is an anime that more than likely, at some point, I will come back to finish because it wasn't bad enough to where I absolutely despise it. It did feel relatively average, but the overall character designs were pretty interesting. All the characters seem pretty unique, and it seems like there's something more to what we see. So I would not necessarily recommend it, but I'm not going to also not recommend it if that makes sense. So from here on out, all the shows that I'll be talking about are things that I have finished. 
So we're looking at Girlfriend Girlfriend here, which I did, of course, watch all 12 episodes of, and I gotta say, the anime felt pretty fine. The animation was quite lazy, the character designs was definitely the highlight of this, it still had the same cutesy character design from the manga, but overall I feel like the 23 episodes, or not 23 episodes, 23 minute episodes made it feel too long for the kind of gags. The manga works much better if you just read a single chapter at a time rather than having to watch 23 minutes. In 5 minutes, Girlfriend, Girlfriend is able to remain consistently funny, but over the course of 23 minutes, Girlfriend, Girlfriend struggles a lot more to remain funny. Overall though, I would still say it was a fine enough anime and a fine enough adaptation, it just wasn't anything as good as I think it could have been. So sitting at 4 for me is That Time I Got Read Cardi Out of the Slime, Season 2, Part 2. Slime is just one of those shows, as it continues to go on, I lose interest of it. This season started out very slow moving. For about the first 6-7 to seven episodes, we saw very little action, and it was all just talking and plot development. Which isn't inherently bad, but honestly, the plot is kind of fucking what is going on at some points. Maybe I'm just dumb as shit, but I don't fully follow what exactly what's going on in that time I got reincarnated as a slime as now. And it took me all the way until really episode 12 to really get what's going on. Again, that might be my own fault for just being dumb as shit. But I also feel like the plot, even once I kind of got it, wasn't that interesting. I feel like they're trying to do that thing where they're setting up where there's a lot more hidden behind the scenes. But we just have to kind of wait to get there. But because of that, it's like, what are we doing now then? I feel like we're just kind of stalling until there's something more to go on. And because of that, although the season has undoubtedly, you know, achieved good critical success, it just wasn't for me. And I will most likely watch the movie that they already announced for Slime whenever it comes out. But if there's ever another, like, full season, I probably won't be watching it anymore. So for the next one on the list, sitting at number four, is Words Bubble Up Like a Soda Pop, a movie that was released on Netflix. I watched this not because I had a ton of interest in it, but ultimately I was going on a flight, like, right before this or right after this came out, and I just went ahead and downloaded it on my iPad, and it made a fine enough watch on the flight. The story was overall good, but it was definitely aimed for a younger audience than I think I am, so I feel like I can't quite talk fully. I don't relate nearly as much as to these characters as much as I would have, say, back when I was, you know, in middle school, early high school. This would have been a much more interesting and gripping story than it is to me now, but nonetheless, the animation was overall very nice. I appreciated the art style and looking very colorful, and it definitely helped that full kitty feeling. But again, just probably a little out of the same range, but if you are, I would I would definitely recommend it. Number three would be Remake Our Life. Remake Our Life was something that sounded very interesting to me, because it was more or less something akin to Read Life, which is one of my favorite animes, at least the OVA for it, where essentially a guy went down a more business orientated uh, degree type thing whenever he went to college and now sitting at 27 he has a load of regrets and he wishes that he could go back to college and pursue something more artistic and ultimately he basically gets taken back in time full erase style and he gets a chance to redo this kind of stuff. It starts out really good and there's a lot of initial momentum in the first episodes but as the show continues to go on it kind of just cycles through the same shit over and over again and it really loses that steam it has and especially in the last few episodes where it eventually has a time skip back to current times but we see the effects of what he did it feels almost incomprehensible on what's going on i just think the show started out a lot stronger than it ended up being but if they ever do a season two of it i would undoubtedly be watching that season two because i think this story could have a lot more to it so for my number two spot it's a bit of a cheat because the actual release date of this was not at all in the summer season, but the reason it's on this list is because whenever it got a U.S. movie theater release, it was during the summer, and that is Josie the Tiger and the Fish. So I went to theaters and actually watched this movie, and it was a very nice romance movie. It basically centers around a young man who wants to be a marine biologist, because there of course are many benefits to being a marine biologist, and then a young lady who's in a wheelchair. And essentially he gets the job opportunity to watch after the young lady in the wheelchair to help pay for stuff because he's a broke college student. Relatable? Am I right? Or am I right, baby? God, there's so many fucking bills. Either way, though, it was just a really cute overall romance. And Studio Bones did a fantastic job animating it. It looked beautiful, the story was nice, and sometimes it played a little too much on the melodrama for me, but nonetheless the overall story felt coherent and the characters felt very realistic and it was a very relatable overall story. So I would highly recommend if you have the time to watch Josie the Tiger and the Fish.
Finally, for my number one anime of the summer 2021 season will be Miss Kobashi's Dragon Maid S. I watched the first season of Miss Kobashi's Dragon Maid during the summer season and it was extremely enjoyable. I absolutely think Kyoto Animation knocked it out of the fucking park and they only did better with the second season. There's just something about Slice of Life that is not inherently interesting, but when you add these supernatural elements and these incredibly just adorable characters, specifically Kana, she's absolutely fucking adorable. Um, although if you loot Kana, I think you should actually go to fucking prison. But just the way that they design the characters and have multiple skits within an episode to where you're not constantly watching the same thing continue on, but you're getting different aspects of the same day many times, makes the slice of life aspect feel a lot faster and a lot more enjoyable. So rather than a single 23 minute episode where you're just constantly watching the characters do the same thing over the course, you're seeing many different micro adventures within a day, some longer than others, but you're getting a lot more fleshed out world and you're giving more time to each individual characters, which I think was essential to making Muskobashi She's Dragon Maid special. Another great thing about it is every character in Ms. Kurobashi's Dragon Maid is extremely unique. Even the background characters all feel like actual characters rather than just people that are there in order to further the plot of our main characters. The entire like town or city that Kobayashi lives in feels extremely fleshed out and Kyoto Animations just did such a good job making it feel that way. So of course Ms. Kurobashi's Dragon Maid would have to sit at my number one spot for this season. So overall, that's everything for my season personally, but let me know definitely down below what you watched. Are there any shows that I missed in this season that, you know, are a lot better than what I watched? Or maybe some of the shows that I dropped, I should give another chance because they're better than my initial impressions. Either way, I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.